I, it's, you know, it's sad, very sad. Um, I'll kind of confess that I went through my own grieving process. I mean, you know, there was this maybe some hope of a, of a miracle in Michigan, but after Super Tuesday, I mean, this was pretty much over. Uh, so I guess I had already sort of come to some terms with it. Um, and now we're kind of analyzing what is the actual long-term implications of this campaign? And I, and I can't, and I think honestly, we, we cannot be Pollyannish. We can't tell uh, bedtime stories. We can't flinch from defeat, from failure. We can't look away from mistakes that were made. Um, and we can't, and we have to be deeply honest about the state of the democratic party and about where the left actually is. And I think a lot of those answers are not, uh, what we would want them to be right now. Uh, and at the same time, there's just no question that Bernie Sanders leadership, as well as a variety of other factors, some good, some very bad, some people are getting, there's plenty of people getting radicalized right now. And I don't want anybody to get radicalized this way because this is horrible, <laughs> but it's happening. Um, those kind of ridiculous talking points against single payer or like oh, a lot of people like their job health care. Well, how about millions are losing it right now? And the next bailout package, um, most Democrats and the Republicans, I think, will work hard to uh, do a bailout uh, package for insurance companies instead of just providing every American health care. So things are changing. Bernie Sanders leadership is essential in that. He carried clearly and bravely um, and with a very basic and solid humanity, a social democratic message that makes him the best leader of the time, that makes him somebody that we all should appreciate. We can critique and question and so on. Uh, but Bernie's put a lot on the board for us. And I honor him for that 100%. And he's also still making a very dopey man worried. This is Brian Kilmeade on Fox News. And let me tell you something. Brian is scared. Decided I can't win, I can't campaign, so I'm going to quit but hold on to my delegates. Let's listen to what Bernie Sanders wants from Joe Biden going forward. Today, I congratulate Joe Biden, a very decent man, who I will work with to move our progressive ideas forward. On a practical note, let me also say this. I will stay on the ballot in all remaining states and continue to gather delegates. While Vice President Biden will be the nominee, we must continue working to assemble as many delegates as possible at the Democratic Convention where we will be able to exert significant influence over the party platform and other functions. Hello, socialism. It's not goodbye. Uh, Kevin, uh, real quick, last night on Stephen Colbert last night, he came out and said, Joe Biden's got to advance, open up a circle. He's got to get more progressives around him. So hello, $15 minimum wage. Hello, Medicare for all. And goodbye, oil and gas, because fracking is now banned. If he gets his way and has legitimate influence with Joe Biden, your thoughts? Yeah, so Bernie Sanders may be suspending his campaign, but his socialist ideas continue to live on, and they seem to be embraced more each day by Joe Biden. Yet here we are in this coronavirus where the U.S. was uh, one of the best prepared nations in the world uh, to handle this. But when President uh, Trump realized that we needed a partnership, it was private business, the road to the rescue with the new testing, gearing up the new production, bringing what? the innovation and the solutions to uh, the table. It's been that partnership. If we had been uh, limited just by a one-size-fits-all national government, frankly, we wouldn't have the hope we're starting to see today in our local communities. So socialism is being proven not to work as we speak. And But Joe Biden continues to embrace more and more of it. I'll tell you, that's not going to go well in Texas. Oh, my God. All right. So first of all, there is no better advocate. Like, I don't know what world they're living in. Uh, but that's a better case uh, for Joe Biden than anything I'm seeing from any resistance person. Um, it reminds me of how, you know, back in the day, you could read 
some profile of of some democratic political consultant or some you know some corporate hack aligned with the democratic party or some you know mediocre shitbag democratic politician in the national review or something and halfway through it you go like my god maybe this person is a secret sandinista i had no idea they, their politics were so intelligent and dynamic um again you know I want to warn folks because there is a tendency and this is what happens if you watch Tucker. This is what happens if you check out what someone like Josh Hawley is doing, actually even Marco Rubio. There is a very smart Republican move uh, in the so-called populist direction around small business, around supply chains. Um, and this is a very dangerous formulation in politics because a hard right social position and a more economically moderate uh, sort of quasi populist one could be an extremely effective formula. And that's what we saw in 2016. So I don't want to get complacent. Those are where the, the danger signs are. And those folks are much smarter than the you know mainstream of the Democratic Party. Um, and they're very dangerous. Uh, but this is the easy stuff right here. You know, just some moon faced dope from Texas, just talking nonsense. Like the United States is in a horrifying situation with Corona. There are a massive amount of unnecessary deaths have already occurred. The government is giving itself, the Trump administration is giving itself basically such a tremendous latitude and metrics that they can define success in a way that a couple hundred thousand people who did not need to die could die. And we all know that the most successful places in the world, most particularly South Korea, they have one of these things. They have a one size fits all. They have a beyond Medicare for all system, which incidentally includes, as Ben Burgess pointed out to me, because he's taught in South, Carolina, uh, South Korea, uh, you're covered, even if you're not a South Korean citizen. So. Every model we have, Costa Rica is doing the best in Latin America. What does Costa Rica have? Better health care than the United States, a socialized system. So, you know, it's funny to watch, uh, you know, Fox do, you know, the silly old delusional libertarian uh, song and dance. And it's a good reminder, too, that despite some of the rhetoric from the Trump world, um, that's still basically what's driving the Republican Party, even as we have to look at the horizon and folks like uh, uh, Hawley who are going to be, you know, that need to be defeated and are much di and might be bringing a much more, a much different proposition to it. But the basic libertarian corporate Republican death cult continues and uh, it would be hysterical if it wasn't so murderous and it's always embarrassing. Um, now I know, uh, Brendan had a different perspective. Uh, Brendan, did you want to, you want to jump in? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think the private public partnership has been great. <laughs> it's just, I love, it's like literally like it, it sounds so, it sounds so like, it's like, okay, the, the private public partnership where Donald Trump pleads with the CEO of pharmacy chains. Uh, to de to deploy some proprietary test, or we can't take, uh, you know, uh, things from you know from uh, testing kits that have been developed in other countries, uh, as an example. Um, oh, so it should be the fight for twenty now. Yeah, I would say actually the fight for thirty, frankly. Sure. And there does need to be, there absolutely needs to be a universal two grand a month UBI for at least a year. Yep. At least a year, and then I would say that we stick with the UBI, but it's on top of Medicare for all, robust public housing, obviously rent control, and a whole other set of policies that it can fit inside so it doesn't just you know, undermine the already meager social safety net and get yeah. sucked up by landlords. You leave the rentier or rentiers, uh, leave them on deep freeze. They don't come back from this. They don't come back from this. Absolutely. And that's also, by the way, a compelling argument um, to small businesses. I think that there is a, and, and regional economies. I actually think there's a really uh, 
good crossover case there with some potentially really smart politics. Today's show 